name is Joyce, and I'm really, really excited to be here. Thanks to the Cooper Union, Alexander, Cara, Barbara, Mike, and Ellen for my introduction, and everyone who helped put this together. I'm really honored to be able to speak in front of you here today. And when I was asked to be a speaker a few months ago, at first I was a bit hesitant because I'm, as a motion designer, I feel a little like a fish out of water. I'm not a type designer and I'm not even a graphic designer by trade, but given a chance to really think about it, I realized that type and motion are kind of like Abby and Alana. You know, they go hand in hand, they're best friends, and they're incredibly powerful forces on their own. Uh, but when they come together, that's when one can uplift one another and be able to make each other stronger. And I'm hoping there's some Broad City fans out in the audience, or that analogy would just make no sense. Awesome. <laughs> um, today I'll give you a brief overview of the, type that I work, of the type of work that I do, and I hope that you'll gain some insight into how I approach type from a motion point of view. But first, who the hell am I? Um, I'm a Hong Kong-born Australian art director and motion designer, and as a kid, I lived on a steady stream of cartoons, like this and this. Um, if you've ever seen that episode, uh, Australian episode of The Simpsons back in the 90s, that's pretty much what Australia's like. And the most surprising thing you learn about my home country is that kangaroos aren't as cute as you think they are. And the least surprising thing is that, yeah, pretty much everything in Australia is out to get you. And I personally love that Russell Crowe was included on that bottom picture. I've always had a creative career goal, and for the longest time, I wanted to become an animator because of all the cartoons that I watched as a kid. And when I got to school, I discovered my favorite part of the school year was being able to draw my tile pages to my school assignments and books. And I didn't know it then, but looking back, I would say this was my first foray into design. And shout out to all the people who also drew some bubble letters in primary school. I know I'm not the only one. Uh, creating, drawing, illustrating were things I really enjoyed. Uh, but I always had it in the back of my mind that I wanted these images to move, even though I didn't know how to do that just yet. In university, I studied a BFA with a major in animation. And at this point, I felt like I was at crossroads. There were things I liked about animation and design, but each felt like something was missing for me. But then, there was this one subject that was the introduction to motion design and encompassed all the things I liked about design and animation, and that was it. You know, this video is by a studio called MK12, and they were one of the really, really early motion studios. And I remember seeing this in the early 2000s and just knowing this was exactly what I wanted to do. After I graduated, I worked at a studio in Australia where I got to work on a wide range of projects. And I think it's because of the opportunity to experiment that I started using type more and more. Nowadays, I work from my work ranges from like video installations to advertising to title design work. And I've had the opportunity to work on some really great title sequence projects from True Detective to The Expanse and Semi Permanent, which I'll talk about a little later. Most recently, I was design director for this season's Patriot Act, where I had the opportunity to lead the graphics team, work with Hassan and the writers to come with the, with, with the visuals that you see on that big fuck off stage. Um, my last episode actually comes out tomorrow, so be sure to catch it on Netflix. But before I get into exactly how I use type in my work, I'm often asked, what's the difference between motion design and animation? Well, it's a really hard one to clarify because they're obviously they're closely related. Uh, but if I had to make a comparison, just as a topographer is a type of designer, a motion designer is a type of animator. But not all animators are motion designers, just like not all designers are topographers. And the biggest difference is the way we communicate our stories. Animators, in the traditional sense, relies heavily on characters and narrative principles to communicate ideas. So the people who bring to life the Pixar movies would be considered animators, while motion designers use design, like shape, color, composition, and topography to tell our stories. 
So people like Sol Bass, Oscar Fischinger, and modern day title designers like Carl Cooper and Karen Fung are all motion designers. Type is a big part of what I make, especially in title sequences. And for me, it's never a static element. It's something always used with movement. And if there's one thing I hope you take away from my talk today, is that when thinking about type from a motion standpoint, it should never be an afterthought. It should always be entwined with your concept and direction from the very get-go. Uh, it is something that enriches the concept, not an additive or a cool element to add at the end. So how can we use type and motion together in a thoughtful way that doesn't feel like an afterthought? Well, when I tackle a project, there are three ways I use them together. First, I use type as the inspiration. Second, type as the visual thread. And thirdly, as the main focus. So let's get into number one, type as the inspiration. When I'm in a situation where I have to come up with an animation for a, a typeface or a logo, I really try to dissect the design and try to see them more like shapes. You know, do they remind me of anything? Do, what feelings do they evoke? And when it comes to me already animated, I take it a step further and use that animation as an added point of inspiration. An example of this is a short animation I directed for a motion project called A, Work, a Word A Week by Motion Type Foundry Animography. And last year they invited designers from all around the world to create a short 20 second animation using one word of their choosing inspired by one of their typefaces. And we had free reign to do whatever we wanted, as long as it was, you know, use one of their typefaces as a starting point. It was a really, really fun project to be part of, and the result were 52 really diverse motion pieces. Here are some of my favorites, and I would definitely recommend checking them all out on Vimeo. So what I did was, uh, first thing I did was I chose my favorite font out of their catalog, which is Barber because I knew it would make things easier if I just chose something I was already drawn to. And next, I broke down what the letter forms looked like to me and what the motion reminded me of. And to me, the, the letters looked illustrative, a little art deco, and almost had a little like cutout vibe. And separately to that, the animation made it seem like the letters were being revealed to the light, as if a light source was being swept across. And this turned out to be a Eureka moment because around the time I was working on this, I'd just come back from a trip from Copenhagen where I visited Louisiana Modern, uh, Museum of Modern Art. And there I saw a really amazing exhibition on the art and history inspired by the moon. And if you're ever in Denmark, I definitely recommend you checking out Louisiana. With the moon exhibition kind of fresh in my mind and the thought that the letters looked like they were being revealed through a light, I put one and one together and came up with the idea to create a motion piece around the idea of a lunar eclipse. It led me to dig up these references of old celestial star maps, which I loved because the illustrated nature really complemented the design of Baba, of the letters themselves. And these references felt like a perfect extension of the type, speaking both to its design and its animation. So I'm really, really glad I went and saw the exhibition at Louisiana because we really got the ball rolling. And it goes to show why it's important to get yourself out there and immerse yourself in things outside the design bubble that you live in, as you never know how you can incorporate it back into your work. Dissecting the design and animation of Barber separately allowed me to see more points of reference that inspired the core concept. And both were really instrumental into the piece and led to the different aspects of the final animation. The second way I use type in motion is by using it as a visual element, as a design element in itself, to see it more than just copy or words on a screen. You know, type can be used as a connecting thread in an entire piece of work. 
A little while ago, I directed a title sequence for a technology and creative conference in upstate New York called Like Minds. It's a really cool conference where you get to sleep in cabins and you're surrounded by beautiful New York nature. And when I was brought into the project, there are already a lot of boundaries for me to work within. You know, the art direction was set, the typeface was chosen, and that year's logo type was already designed, which meant a lot of the groundwork for the colors and the mood were already done for me. The conference theme of that year was growth. And since Like Minds is all about the merge of technology and nature, that made me think about the patterns that exist in both. The titles explore this intersection between these patterns and how they overlap visually. With the concept down, I decided to build upon the art direction they already set and hone into what made it special, which was the combination of real life textures and neon graphics. I was especially inspired by their logo design and a lot of the compositions spawned from that. At a simplest form, the logo is basically made up of rounded lines, and I really liked how geometric it all was. So what I did was I made these rounded lines the connecting thread through the titles. We start more abstract and close, then as the camera moves further and further out, we see more and more of the shapes that make up the logo. I took care in like making the shapes move along the same direct, direct tonality of the angles and angles as the logo, so that when we see the shapes coming together at the very end to create the Like Minds logo, all the preceding animation speaks to that. This was a completely solo project, just me and my sound designer, and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. It was a great project that was largely inspired by their logo uh, that, used, that I used as a grounding element through the titles. The end result feels playful, fun, and completely representative of the mood of light minds. Thank you. Lastly, I want to talk about using type as the main focus. In motion, a lot of times we use type as a supplementary element, something to, on screen to add texture. And if I'm being honest, I'm definitely a fan of doing that. But last year, I had a chance to direct a title sequence for a conference back home in Australia where I decided to go bold and use type in a way that I hadn't before. For those who aren't familiar, Semi Permanent is the biggest creative conference in Australia. And last year, I had the honor of being their very first female director for their opening titles. Thank you. <laughs> they were the first conference I attended as a design student. So being the title designer for something that was a big part of my student life was very special to me. The brief for the titles centered around the theme of collaboration. It was a really grand and big project between me and a team of 10 really talented people from all around the world that I had the honor to pick. Uh, it was a really big project that combined 2D, 3D, and live action. I knew I wanted the type to be equally weighted with the visuals. 
for it to be bold, fun, and playful, to consciously go against the small white type that we so often see in title design today. So that was the goal I set for my team from the very get-go. One of my 10 collaborators was Worship, who is the creative duo Nicholas Gerard and Raphael Ruiz, based up in Toronto. And I'm a huge fan of their work, and if you don't know them, I would highly recommend you guys checking them out. Uh, they've done work for Blade Runner 2049, Adidas, FTI, FITC conference, and the way they use topography in motion is just incredible. Uh, always creating work with type at the forefront and using it in ways that feel so fresh and exciting. And so I knew I wanted them to create the type for Semi Permanent, and they fucking killed it. The type they designed was rigid compared to the organic visuals. So that kind of separated the two, but helped both shine in their own way. And ultimately, the animation is what tied them both together. And Worship was able to mirror the organic and flowy nature of their visuals by utilizing a strong, like a smooth, stretchy animation treatment. Uh, the pacing uh, of the names was highly collaborative between Worship, our editor, Alex G and I. Uh, we worked extremely closely to make sure the names were timed correctly, that they hit the right cues with the music and the visuals, but be long enough on screen to actually be legible. The main challenge was to balance between the focus of the names and the visuals. And Worship really nailed that and took care that the type would always complement the visuals while still being bold and a point of focus. In the end, the type just tied everything together. You know, Worship designed something that was really unique that made the names a main focus in addition to the visuals, and it's honestly one of my favorite parts of the projects, as I don't think we've seen type quite like this before. you can see from these three pieces of work that type and motion go hand in hand. Uh, you know, they're essentially BFFs that could get along with each other really, really well. Um, in motion, type can be used as a point of inspiration, as a design element and a connecting thread. You know, and finally, type doesn't always have to be a supporting character. It can be the main focus and used as the hero element. When type and motion is used in a thoughtful way, they can help elevate each other and in turn enrich the entire project. And the next time you're in the beginning stages of a project that involves type, you know, try and involve motion as early as you can to weave the concept for the design with how it moves. Because making sure the motion is never an afterthought makes all the difference. Here's where you find me on the internet.
follow me, send me an email, say hi, or if you want to share some feels about the ending of World City. Thank you. Thank you.